सो एवरीबडी इज हेयर यू गाइज हैव योर लंच येस नो समथिंग कुछ तो बोलो यार हुई सिंग नो ओके सो आई तो हैड माई लंच यू कैन गेस इज फॉर माई साइज सो राइट नाउ वी हैव गॉट अ नेक्स्ट स्टॉक शेड्यूल्ड प्रोजेक्ट में ड्यूसा फॉर द मो यू कैन ट्वीट आई बीन रिपीटिंग दिस अगेन सो द पासवर्ड फॉर द वाई फाई इज गीक्स आर एस दैट इज जी ई के एस एल्फाबेटिकल आर एन यू एस एंड यू कैन ट्वीट यूजिंग द हैश टैग पाइकॉन इंडिया एंड देर आर कपल ऑफ ओपन स्पेस इज गोइंग ऑन सो देर इज वन और टू थर्टी इट्स कॉल्ड लेस पिन पाइथन and another from 3 to 4 it's i python in real world another in another talk in 3 to 4 section that is scientific uh, using scientific uh, scientific computing using python so it's about scipy and stuff like that uh, furthermore there will be lots of how many of you are hardware enthusiast here okay so this i think there are couple of more talks from on arduino and plotly and stuff like that so you can just go through that <coughs> so in audi 3 there are talks uh, by blue jeans uh, 3 to 4 by psf meeting is there so you can go there if you want to become a member or something or just get enlightened with the stuff uh, z omega is uh, organizing another talk from in 4 to 5 and all these talks are in audi 3 the first one was in audi 1 uh, and and that's it that that's it for now we'll we'll keep you updated with the open sessions so just settle down fast okay we are following indian standard time Uh, our next speaker is Rahul Day. He is going to speak about Medusa. Rahul is a backend and infrastructure engineer at Mart Mobi Technologies. He loves systems programming and is passionate about core systems. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, hello. 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 Can I hear you? Hello. 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 Is it audible? Hello. 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 Is it? Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Uh, so, good afternoon, everyone. Everyone's well fed and not sleepy. I hope. So, so I'll begin with uh, Medusa. Uh, this is one of my uh, pet projects. Can that mm, we can say that? So, a bit about me. So I am a great foodie. I love eating. I love cooking. You can see it from my size. And I love movies. And fair warning, I am a huge Christopher Nolan fan. And I make jokes when I am uncomfortable, which I am right now a bit. So going on to Medusa. So here, uh, the main purpose behind Medusa is. 
somewhat of a reinvention of the wheel, the age old problem that we face with Python that it's slow. So when so whenever we're trying to do something really big, really heavy with Python and involving real, very high disk IO or recursive co codes, so it's really slow. So there have been lots of instances how to tackle these problems. Like for example, you, you have seen the SideScan project which compiles Python to static C++. But the thing is, and also the uh, JIT compiler PyPy which is a pretty amazing piece of work. So what we thought is, why not compile uh, Medi uh, Python to a language which is inherently more faster. So on a boring night in Valor Institute of Technology, me and two of my friends, Akash and Apu who are there in the audience. So we thought that Google came out with this new uh, language called Dart late 2011. So the, have you, you all have idea about the V8 JS compiler, right? The V8 engine? Yes? So, so Dart is a language which is uh, targeted for even faster speeds compared to J JavaScript. Dart is a language which is much more, uh, let's say, toned down and specific as compared to JavaScript. So the Dart VM that Google came out with is insanely fast. It's so fast that uh, I can safely say that the only thing that's faster, that's faster than it is C, C++. So, so what we thought, me and two of my friends said, why not let's compile Python to Dart and let it run on the Dart VM. So that's, that's the history of Medusa. And you can find Medusa at my GitHub repo. It's there at Rahul080327, that's my GitHub handle. So let's, let's get to know more about her. So, so first things first, what she's not. She's not an ugly monster as what Medusa seems to be. She, not, she does not dwell in the underdeps of the Greek mythology. She is a cute little pet. So the next thing, she is not just another Python implementation. The first things first, are you people tired of the names Python, Zython, Brython, Iron Python, this, that? Everything, everything has a than or pi in front of it. So I just named mine Medu Medusa, just, to, just for a change. So, and the main thing about it is it compiles to a different language, so you can actually have access to the feature set of that language. You can actually extend Python to much more different levels. And last thing, it's not slow. It's not at all slow, it's a blazing fast Python implementation. So the next thing, which is actually, she runs Python fast, really fast, and we're gonna see in a while how fast can this be actually? So this can be as fast as you want it. Second thing it compiles to Dart. Dart, as I already told you about it, is a very super cool language, very fast. And the third thing is it's JIT compile. So Medusa is a JIT compiler in a sense. So it JITs to Dart and Dart being a descendant of V8, it jets to assembly. So we are directly going from Python to assembly. So that's one thing that haven't been done before, I believe. So PyPy does it to some extent, but we do it on a much more efficient scale. So, and the last thing is, it's extendable. It's extendable to infinite proportions. Python compiles to Dart. Dart is an extensible language. Python can be, Python can be extended with features from Dart. In a while, I'm gonna show you how. So those are the things that Medusa is actually. So a great magician once said that every magic trick consists of three parts, right? So let's see the first part. So why don't we start with a small little hello. So it is, uh, let's see. So there's some code I was writing before, let's erase that. So we'll start with the usual problem. Oh, that's my input file, hello world. So let's try running it in Python first, 
let's see how it behaves. And one more thing, why not why don't we just time the run? Let's see how much time it takes. So that's five run, that's nineteen milliseconds, so it's very fast. You can see that. So hopefully we can beat this speed. So this way this is where Medusa comes in. All you need to do is replace this with Medusa VM, that's it. Just replace Python with Medusa VM, rest all the same. Okay, uh, that wasn't supposed to happen, sir. Okay, okay, uh, slight mistake, right? Why not? Uh, we'll we'll try to improve it. Let's let's try this again. Okay, the second thing, the time, right? So let's improve on that fiasco a bit. So. So I have one more code out here. Uh, so this is a pretty simple code. Anyone, you know what it does, right? Can anyone tell what it does? Yeah, just print the 36 Fibonacci number. That's all right, simple code. So the thing that you can see is it's uh, a recursive implementation. It's pretty heavy duty code there. So I'm going to try running it. So again, we'll compile with Python first. Okay. It took some time, right? It's a pretty big slice of time for a simple program. So let's see how Medusa fares in this. So do you think it's gonna do any thing? Well, let's let's hope for the good luck. Better, right? So what what I can say is you can still improve on it a bit more, right? So let's go and know about her in a bit more detail. Let's see. Right, now understanding Medusa. So for this, I'm going to be using a very uh, simple yet uh, hard to understand. Do, do, do everyone have a clear conception about how the Towers of Anna program works? It's just uh, two lines of recursive code doing its magic. It's really out of this world, right? So, But the thing is, it's one of the most uh, heavy code that you can run on a on a system we can say or the most benchmark heavy code so so let's see uh, let's go into times of annoying so for the first thing we need is the sorry first thing we need is a file of obviously the towers of annoying file So that's your uh, simple thousand and implementation. Uh, I committed out the commenting that we don't need, but the main uh, issue that we're trying to solve here is this recursive problem out here. So here it's a very large number of calls for this. So, so you can see that we have 25 disks in the towers of annoying. So that's going to be uh, 2 to the power 25 minus 1 moves. And add to that the recursion, it's going to be a very heavy load. So. So what we do is, so that's our first step of Python script. What we're gonna solve out here. Now, uh, since Medusa is a compiler, right? So what it does is it compiles Python to that a language to language trans compiler. So why do we need to compile it again and again, the same file if we get it once and for all? So, so we have a caching mechanism for Medusa. So has anyone heard about the HHVM project, Hip Hop Virtual Machine? If 
Facebook's project. Yeah. So has anyone got into it? Like, how does it work? No. No, right. So, so the thing about HHVM, apart from running PHP really fast, is this is its scarcity mechanism. So, so I implemented a similar style out here. So for this, and and the thing is, it's persistent cache. Unlike other JIT, JIT machines like V8 and A, we do, we don't have a persistent cache. Like J JVM also doesn't have a persistent cache. The main reason for using a persistent cache is the fact that we want our code to survive restarts, to survive uh, future runs for anything. It should remember what code it compiled. So for that, I'm using the schema. So this is implemented in SQLite 3 embedded database. So we have our three three column thing, uh, three co column layout, so infile, hash, and the gen code. So the infile is basically the absolute part of the file that we're trying to compile. So the so right now it's an under py, that file. So and hash is a 256 secure hash algorithm, the rest of the contents of the file. And these two columns, mind you, are unique. Why unique? Because so the first time when we're trying to compile, a successful insert happens in a database without any uh, constraint failures. So that from that Medusa infers that it has never encountered this file before. So it means that this path is unique and the hash code is also unique. So Medusa is en encountering this file for the first time. So for that it initiates the compiler. So which, which we're gonna see it in a while. So and compiles that into a dart equivalent dart code. So we are storing the entire dart code inside the database. This again inspired from hip hop virtual machine. So we have the dart here and this is persistent. We can use it again and again. So now what happens when we come across the same file from the same path again? So this thing fails, our unique concern fails out here. So for that, we check the hash. That is the file has been changed or not. If the hash changes, which means the file has been changed, so we need to compile it back again. So if nothing changes, both of them fails, we know that we have it out here. So that way, uh, Medusa can determine that this file has been compiled before. So let's just use that code instead of compiling again. So on this, a bit of metrics, we are saving almost 200 to 250 milliseconds overhead just by using this cache. So this is where all the magic happens, the compiler. So this is completely implemented in Python, a bit of PyPy style. Python that compiles Python to Dart. So it's a bit of boots bootstrapping that's happening there. So, this is how the thing happens. Basically, we start with the source, and you all must be, since we are we are at PyCon, we know about the AST module. It's a pretty famous module. So, the AST module is a very helpful thing that actually provides you with the abstract syntax tree of the code that you just provided it, and also it provides you the visitor pattern for it. A visitor pattern, everyone knows a visitor pattern out here. Okay, a bit of info. Uh, everyone must, must be having a bit of idea about the AST, right? It's a tree-like data structure from which uh, you, you can re you represent your code in a tree-like data structure. For that, you can easy parsing for it. So AST also produce a node visitor framework. So that uh, for that, we, we actually have a callback mechanism. So let's say you want to traverse the AST of a simple one plus one. So for that, you have a central node plus the two ones on the other side. So every time it visits a number or a operator or anything, so for that you get a call back. So that's the visitor pattern. So everything is provided by the AST module. It's as simple as import AST. So I'm using that. And for every visitor pattern that I visit, for example, I visit a print node, I visit a list node, I visit a dictionary node. So for that, I generate dart code for each and every node. So basically, I'm going for a, a top-down traversal. Python uses a top-down traversing, so parsing, sorry. And I generate each dart code together, and finally, I stitch the thing together to get an optimized dart code. So talking about optimization, optimization happens in various ways in Medusa. For example, uh, you have written three functions, but you called only two or one of them. You didn't call it actually one. So Python, Medusa will ignore the third code. So the Dart code that Python generates is totally, uh, that Medusa generates is totally optimized 
and it's compressed like in compressed JS code the dart will also compress and minify it as much as possible so that the VM passes it as fast as possible so uh, let's go into the ASC module this is this is the ASC that's been generated for Towers of Honeycode that you just saw this is not exactly how it generates but I came up with a graphical view of it to help you understand so every Python code uh, has a module implement uh, thing as top code we all know that so the first thing that you saw in that code was a function right a TOH function so you can see a function def node being created out there so the function that uh, this is the name of the function the parameters and the body of the function basically so similarly there is entire body the if the statements and the function calls again and that's the last call function node anyone into compilers VM out here any weirdos in the crowd who loves by DFS parsers I don't know we all hated that thing right in our PLT class so I'll, I would be surprised if no one if someone some hand comes up okay cool respect for you so so I'll, I'll just go into one of the nodes I know this is a bit uh, what we Python people don't like right going too much into stuff so so but this the best way with me the entire thing should be fine so this is just the function node so for that you just saw that one node being visited out here so similarly that's our uh, this was a Python function that got translated into a Dart function so here you can see the main reason for choosing Dart as a endpoint first things Dart is very syntactically similar to Python you can see that and the major reason is and the reason why we all love Python is it's dynamic typeless nature right so we can store anything everything do whatever we want so Dart also has this with a few, uh, few uh, constraints limitations and yeah and similarly and having all these features that is still able to run really fast so so these things kept in mind so you get the finally translated code so that's your code so you might be wondering what all these things are about the dollar and wrappings and yeah. and, uh, and what, what, what the first line means so to creating any uh, let's say a compiler or VM or anything that compiles one thing to another uh, another language or whatever layer language you need a runtime for it right so for that the target language be it assembly code be it C code be it Dart for instance you need a runtime a runtime is basically a library of code or function that that's going to help run your translated code along with it it's somewhat like if you attended to, uh, today's keynote Kusil was telling, out, telling about libc right so libc is a runtime for c so all your printf everything everything is implemented within libc so so for that we have our medusa runtime it's called the it's it's actually an entire folder i'll show it to you So this is this is basically the entire Dart implementation. So here, this folder is our runtime. So so if you wanna uh, look into it, so this file is a Dart inbuilt a Dart file. This is a pretty huge file. So what you can see, the first thing in this file here is classes, entire classes. So so I'm gonna show you the one thing. yeah so one thing about python right python behaves weirdly in places so i'll i'll ask you some questions we are all good python programmers So 
So what do you think is the output of this? Five, right? Okay, cool. Nice one. Is that a better? Right. Any idea what happened out here? Uh, yeah, it is short circuited. So, how, how are you evaluating this? A list or five? It's a it's a list, right? So, yeah. So, so that's what something about Python that the other languages don't do generally. So, a list, a full list, a blank list is false, mind you, and uh, a, a blank string is false again. A non-zero value is false. So, all that thing, this kind of weird way we are getting Python. So, it helps us along in our code a lot, but it's really a nightmare when you're writing a compiler for Python. So, do you know any other language that does this? JS to some extent, right? But not comparing anything. So, one quick question, like, I have an object of class A and an object of class B, so I'm comparing A le A less, OBJ1 is less than OBJ B. It compares by the object name, the data type. So if you're comparing an int with a string, so because i comes first than s, so that i is smaller than s, so i is a string. So Python basically compares anything with anything. So that's one really huge headache we had while implementing it. So coming back to this file, so that's another language that supports your proper operator overloading, like your C++. So we are really blessed we got that, so that we are able to implement all this weird behavior using <coughs> all over. So basically, this file is the bridge between Python and Dart. So all the functionality that Python has or can do, which Dart can't, is implemented in this file. So how it's possible, like for example, if we take the tuple data type that we have in Python. So for that, I created a class called PyTuple. So, so inside this, you'll find uh, all sorts of functions which you might find in a Python file. See, PyString, for example, you have functions like capitalize, center. All these things are not there in Dart. So this is basically a wrapper class which has been created over a usual string value out here. So this is a, this is the actual internal content and this is a wrapper class around it. So basically this provides all the functionality that uh, Python can and that can. It's not yet complete as of now, so it's still being owned. So, so it's a huge thing. As you can see, it's a very big file and it's going to go on and on. So this is basically the range implementation, the generator and stuff. So it's a uh, headache to do this file basically. <coughs> yeah, so, uh, so we now saw what the uh, runtime looks like. So this is the final diet code that's been generated. The dollar n is basically transforming a normal Dart integer to a Python integer by end, so that we can have lots of functionalities and whatever you want. So we can actually see the thing in action. So if I want to see the Dart code, for example, for a file that I have, I want to see what Dart code it generated. So for that. Just pass it and pass a uh, hyphen C with it. So this is different from that Python here. Uh, do we know what Python does with hyphen C? 
the normal Python interpreter. Yeah, it runs the command. So I change it a bit. So I need to work on compatibility. So this thing generates a same, same main file in dot dark. So you can see it. So that's your, if you, if you can make it out, that's a compressed Python uh, dot code that's been generated. Okay. So you can see all the imports being happening and the map, that print got mapped to std out dot right align. So that's a translation that happened and your dart is now, uh, Python is now into a dart. So what happens in the background actually, uh, Medusa takes your Python code, breaks it down into an AST, uh, goes, it, goes through it uh, node by node, optimizes it, and then uh, generates the dart code for it. So, and the Medusa part is implemented in C++, so it actually forks in between for the compiler to run, and then again forks at the end to, for the dart to run. So all that happens with just this click. So mind you, everything happened, the caching happened, everything happened, and you got your output. So you must be all thinking like, what should the towers are running? Why did I choose this code? So let's see. So the last part, the prestige, hey. This would be a good way. Okay. See, this is I'm um, timing the run now. So, how is everyone doing? Cool. Food was good. I hope I'm not boring you on this. Python will be boring you, but I, I'm not. So that's that's 9.96 seconds. That's pretty pretty long. The same thing. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. Okay. Yeah. Cool, and mind you, this was without the cache, so let's try it again. Yeah, that's the best value that I can get out of it. So you can see uh, nearly a 1500% speed boost. So it's not yet complete Medusa, but you can see that it has potential, it can be going to infinite levels. So um, if you want to see what all, there's a thing out here. Yeah. So these are the options that you can get with Medusa. So you can actually install your external Python module, somewhat like the PIP does. So what it does is it takes your Python module, any file, any .py file, converts into dot pre cache so that you can install and use that file anywhere else. So you can import any other file that you want. You have a help and you have a compile to dot only switch. So. So this is it, um, I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that you contribute to it, and, and make it grow as big as possible. So, thank you. <laughs> and at the end, so, yeah, I'm all yours. Yeah. So the thing that we avoided all that thing by just compiling it to Dart, right? So Dart VM takes care of it all. So it's basically what uh, Dart VM's garbage collection. Yeah, and it's super fast, believe me. So uh, how much time will the same uh, task of Hanoi take in PyPy for? PyPy, we tested it. It's around for uh, let's say 3.5 seconds. What about C extensions? Uh, can your uh, right now it's not supported. It just supports Python extensions. So we are working on the C extensions for. It's very cool. Yeah, thank you. So. Um, 
uh, because this is running on V8 ultimately it's uh, dark VM it's okay a, yeah. uh, what's the what are the chances of getting python to finally run in the browser so you don't have to write javascript python already runs in the browser like have you seen this project called brighton so that's compiles python to javascript so originally we were thinking of going for javascript targets for this but but the thing with javascript is totally asynchronous you can't write a simple program like add two numbers and show the result so that thing won't run in so what we found out was that and that and if you research into that that is both server side client side language so you can have any number of targets for that so hey uh, so the example that you showed us tower of hanoi yeah. your implementation i believe was trail recursive yeah. so and i i i might be outdated on this but i thought this was decided that c python would not have tail recursive optimizations yeah uh, 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 so you want to know why why this is happening right so no uh, the question is is, th is this really fair to compare uh, something which does support tail recursive optimizations as a design decision and something which does not and then yeah uh, uh, of speed ups yeah the my uh, my thing is why should we get out of a comfort zone while doing heavy duty codes we like we love python all we don't yeah we love python so my aim for this is keep doing it in python i i'll provide you with an abstracted layer which runs fast so that's all you don't have to uh, to a uh, normal user he doesn't he or she doesn't have to worry about what's going on inside it just that is python code run faster that's all hi uh, i just wanted yeah. to know how do you handle longs in python because there's no li limit to the precision in python for longs longs uh, that's again that feature that support the same precision as python okay that's okay fine so that's the language we chose and we are very happy about it we told you wrote in c c++ right uh, i think it so okay fine uh, how do you do it internally like i just want to know like maybe yeah we just we just transform we you saw that wrapper code there right the okay. pynum wrapper yes. so that thing the wraps around the python data type and creates a dart data type but that you told you wrote in c++ right no uh, this is dart right python to dart there's no c++ c++ is basically the caching and the database okay okay fine the so compiler is pure python compiler is pure python fine and and one else uh so you just showed uh the speed up yeah. uh, on as you said a, t a program that could be easily converted into a tail recursive program yeah. or not uh is is the speed up comparable if you if you chose a cpu bound purely iterative program rather than something that can be i mean are we uh, is this kind of speed up normal for other cpu bound programs as well cpu bound in the sense like you are uh, talking about calculations and stuff right so dart in was kept in mind doing all those things so google tried to port dart as a general purpose language so we did try some now uh, numeric calculations in it it was almost fine the only place where you shouldn't use medusa is a simple programs simple calculation list manipulation text So for that, Medusa is not made for those those things. Medusa is made for very heavy duty stuff, which which we generally go for C extensions or leave Python altogether. So for my aim is to use Python there also. Hi, uh, my question is kind of related to his question. Hi. Uh, did you try running this on any benchmark like Pystone or something like that, rather than a single program? Because it just started up. It's a four five month old project, so we are not really supporting the kind of libraries that they use. So we what we ran is pure hard coded code. So we that that's one of the uh, road maps. So we will be doing it along with GUI uh, support and stuff. So because it's really a uh, nascent stage right now. Any more questions? Okay. Does it support Python specific uh, functions like slicing and all those? Yeah, it's uh, all the basic Python functionality is there. Generators and uh, list. Apart from libraries, everything else is there. 
So most of the thing you might be finding a bit buggy code here and there because it's still going on. So the the SQLite 3 tasks that you saw, the table that I had to change the PPT just before coming out here. So because a commit came today morning, so I had to change that thing. So it's really dynamic right now. And anyone? Okay. So, can we have a huge round of applause for him? Thank you. And one request, please, please do commit to it because we are just three people. We can't write 1991 worth of code. So, we just started four months back. So, please, we need your contributions for this. Thank you.